I think I would have been a pretty good dad. I think I would have been a good, good husband. I also know in my life now as a priest, I really cherish the fact, and I'm grateful for the fact, that this parish for my work, for my priesthood, I can give it my all. It is the most important thing to me. It's what I think of first thing in the morning. It's what I pray about last thing at night. It's my, it's my blood, sweat, and tears. I love it. And I know that if I were married with a wife and kids, I would have to give half my heart to them. And I love being able to give my entire life to my priesthood and my parish. It's not always easy, I will tell you that. There are times when you think, especially like Christmas Eve after six masses, you're thinking, I can be married to Helen Hunt, we can have a lot of kids, I can be home in bed right now. She'll make me breakfast in the morning. There are times when it's tempting, but I also know there's a real value to the celibate life. My sister will always say to me, what about women? Why can't women be free? It's a valid question, and I know, again, looking from the outside in, a lot of people who are not Catholic think it's very discriminatory, it's very unfair, it's very sexist, Here's my personal theory. In our tradition, right now, priesthood, holy orders, is limited to men. That is the way it is. One, my personal theory. I think God likes to choose the most weak and use them to show his strength. So God chose men for the priesthood because we're all basically idiots. That way we're constantly reminded how much we need the Holy Spirit, and it's God who is in charge. If women ran the church, it would be way too efficient. It would be way too well done. We would completely forget that we completely depend on the Holy Spirit. That's my personal theory. I also am constantly saying to my sister, you know what? You're equating priesthood with power, and it's not about power. It's about service. And if you want to talk about service, women serve the church, not only in many ways, but I often find women serve the church much better than men. Women in their roles as wives, as mothers, as teachers, as nurturers, women do much, much better service to the glory of God than priests do, I can tell you that. Don't equate priesthood with power. It's about service. And really, in whatever vocation you're called to, it's ultimately a vocation of service. If you're called to marriage, you're serving your spouse. You're serving Christ in your spouse. You're serving Christ in your children. If you're called to the single life, you're serving Christ by your consecration to the single life and your service in the gospel. Whatever we do, it is about service. I wanted to pause just for a moment and ask you if you had any particular questions. This is my 20th year in the priesthood, and I gotta tell you, every year gets a little bit better. It's a great life. I love it. My best friend, Dave, he and I were in high school seminary together. After high school, he decided that the Lord was calling him to married life. He married a wonderful woman named Sue, and they have three great kids. He has his own business, and we talk almost at least every other day, either by phone or on Skype. And Dave, the day I was with Dave, Dave had just gotten married. He and his wife came from Pittsburgh to Baltimore for my ordination, and the next day for my first mass. Now my first mass, and when, if any of you young men are called to the priesthood, Jack, when you have your first dance, you are a nervous wreck. You're like sweating buckets. You could win your shirt now and fill the garden. You're just, it's nerve wracking. You're up there and you're really self conscious, and it's all. And at the end of my first dance, I got through it. I was like, Phew. and I'm walking down the aisle. And I see Dave and Sue. They hadn't yet had any children. It was just Dave and Sue. And I look over, and Dave has tears running down his face. I'm like, what the hell are you crying for? <laughs> I now have my life. What are you crying about? So I walked over to him and I said, Why are you crying? He said, Do you know I would give my right arm just one time to be able to do? 
what you just got to do. It's like, I said, David, if it's any consolation, I would give my life to be married this soon. But we call angels. But every day when he and I talk, you know, he has struggles in his marriage, and I say to him, Dave, you have a great marriage. You have a great wife. You have great kids. At least two of them are good. The boys are real pain, but he'll grow out of it. You got two out of three. That ain't bad. You got a wonderful life. And he, in his struggles, will say to me, Gosh, I so envy you in the priesthood. You have such a great life. And there are times when I say to him, I envy you in your married life. You have such a wonderful life. Whatever we're called to, there will be struggles. It will not be perfect. It will not be easy. But God's grace does incredible things. If you're called to the priesthood, it's an incredibly gifted life. You get to see phenomenal things. Things that I've seen are just so 